This way we get a token. We get so many cards and some... Oh, Invasion of Archivist. That's insanely powerful card. This will blow your mind, guys. Oh my god, I know what we will do. Uh, let's go to the sideboard. Hello everyone, it's Love here and today a true treat for all the Wish fans. If you like lessons, if you like wishing for this little perfect card, this is a video for you because like especially one of the games was so epic, I think it will be the first one. It was the most epic wish you will ever see. Like it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. That just watch this game, you will know which one is it. We have a lot of removal. We are a Jeskai deck. We are heavily reliant on Chrome Host Seed Shark together with Big Score and Chandra. Of course, uh, assisted with a lot of sweepers and removal. Uh, Invasion of Archavios is our, you know, cool thing of the deck. And the sideboard is extremely powerful. Look at this. Like we have answers to everything. We have life gain against aggro. We have counter spells if we want more, pre you know, more control. Vanish into eternity. Extremely cool card that for three mana basically exiles anything that isn't a land, and you probably don't want to target creature with this one. Uh, draw cards with memory derosion or silver scrutiny, and there's a distinction between farewell and white sands twilight. Farewell, if you need to be defensive and just, you know, exile this annoying underdog or whatever. White Science Twilight lets you not only sweep, but also win the game, probably on the next turn. One of the straws can safely be a removal spell. Uh, it all depends on what you are facing. All right, and there's one extremely cool interaction that was kind of the idea for the deck, so maybe I should start with it. Of course, I am recording this intro seven times and I still cannot get it right, man. Uh, I'm so bad at this. Anyway, Invasion of Arc is a battle. Not only you wish, but you want also the other side. And for this reason, we play Nair Warcrafting, Volcanic Spite, play with fire, because all of those cards can not only remove creatures, but if you don't have targets, they can get the fence down. And one Nahir Warcrafting means that every Volcanic Spite and every, every play with fire flips this permanently. So for one mana, you can suddenly have a card that doubles everything. And one of the biggest payoffs in the deck is Big Score. It sets you for the rest of the game. This is also why Zurgo and Ujatai is here because it can attack invasion and make it so much easier. One hit from Zurgo means that Volcanic Spite can flip it. This is the deck. I really hope you will like it. We had some weird games today, so fair warning. I, this was the most awkward day on the arena since I think months for me. I lost so many games with just being mana screwed on turn 3. However, we made it work and there will be some cool games, but if I'm a little bit, you know, roasty, that's why. <laughs> now you know. All right, guys, so have fun. I really hope you will enjoy the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, the results are on the screen. So pretty decent. I think if we had better draws, it could be better, but that was uh, a bit on the unlucky side, to be honest. So yeah, uh, let's go into the games. Tell me what you think, guys. And yeah, have fun. So our opponent seems to be playing some kind of control, I would guess. It probably has Archangels because this is the best payout for those colors. So I would expect something that is like maybe midrange. You know what? I'm okay with this. Uh, I really want to use Nahir Warcrafting on something because I know I will get mana screwed because I'm getting mana screwed like literally every game today. And I won't be able to play normal magic without this kind of weird tricks. I honestly, most of my losses with this deck are mana screws, if not all. And I'm not talking about seven mana mana screws, I'm talking about turn three and turn four mana screws. All right, so I think we go with the shark, even though it's an emperor turn, but they should do something right now, all right? They cannot play the emperor. Okay, that's good. That's, uh, that's card advantage for us. So we could, of course, answer, get something done, but I much rather uh, have a counter spell. A bit hesitant because he can play the Emperor after we draw the card, but I still think it's okay. Wedding announcement alone is not good enough to threaten too much. The Emperor is the real threat, and it is happening. Alright, let's draw a card and see if something happens. 
Yep, here's the Emperor. However, we can use Chandra and clear the board nicely, but of course we need to hit the land, which we will never do. Uh, because in order to hit land, you would need to hit a land, which is impossible for me. As you can see, I am hitting all of my lands with Nahir Warcrafting for like 3 or 4 cards. So, yeah. <laughs> it is incredible today. It's one of those days in the arena. So they will attack for a lot, but we have Sunfall. We probably want to protect it, but... Well, I mean, they don't have blue mana, so it's fine. They could go for Spite. I could slow it quite a lot this way. I could also play Chandra and just get free value this way. He cannot breach or Kaya, and those are the biggest threats. If he goes Archangel, that's good for my sweepers. Uh, one make disappear can go. Uh, yeah, hitting lands is super important because that's basically my whole gameplay, <laughs> trying to hit my lands. And he can do something because we are tapped, but... Oh, Raska. Raska is really good. It's basically Kaya, but better, because I that's the only Planeswalker I wasn't playing around, because nobody plays it usually. I mean, uh, definitely not what we wanted. But what can you do? Hmm. A harsh one. So I can Sunfall, but that doesn't do too much. I think it should be Chandra. It's not perfect. If he removes her, we are in some serious trouble. This isn't very impactful, but it helps to force a perfect answer. And if he doesn't have a perfect answer, uh, we should be winning this with Chandra. One big score can finish this game. Alright, I'll take it. Super annoying, but not game winning yet. One of the cool things is that they stack one loyalty a turn. Uh, at least to Raska, because of the proliferate uh, Elspeth stacks to a turn. But they stack one a turn, and you can plus two basically. Can I stop drawing all of my make disappears? <laughs> what the hell? At least I can cycle them. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Do I want to get mana? Mana can be good. Let's let's try with this one first and see what we get. All right, that's a good start, definitely. We need to get a lot of job done. Sh shark. Shark is good. All right, those are quite good cards. And those are pretty good cards. So play with fire gets rid of a little bit. They want to try the ultimate, probably. I want to stack some loyalty. And we have already 7 mana, so it means we can big score very easily. Right, there are no permanents, so Elspeth ultimate is not super strong. Alright, let's see. I mean, this just making sure. Yeah, this is important. And the token is also pretty helpful, especially with big score. So I think even though Raska is absolutely extremely powerful and it got exactly in the turn he needed it because we didn't play around it, I still think we have pretty first shot. Like we can do stuff absolutely and Chandra can kill two planeswalkers at once if we do it right. Uh, what will you choose? Alright, that will be a little bit annoying. Alright, let's start the thing. Uh, this will be a land. Even though we like lands, other cards are better. This way we get a token. We get so many cards and some... Oh, Invasion of Archivist. That's insanely powerful card. Alright, now we will get mana. I guess I could get rid of this. But maybe he minus to the Elspeth to deal more damage and give flying. I would really like it. 
especially that we have backup Chandra. All right, this this turns out to be a pretty cool game. So we got the thing we wanted. We have three planeswalkers to answer. All of them are extremely powerful, but we are doing nice job so far. I can sacrifice one of the Chandras. Yeah, I think that should be okay. I think we are doing it, man. All right, let's play the round. All right, this is the big turn. We need to do stuff. We can kill those two. What do I have in the sideboard? That's the question. What do I have in the sideboard? We can have any card, man. Oh, I think I know. Oh, oh my God, this will be up. This will blow your mind, guys. Oh my God, I know what we will do. Uh, let's go to the sideboard. Here you are. That's the stuff. And it will be doubled. Raska and Eternal Wonder. Oh man, that's insanely brutal. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now. And we go for four. See ya. You thought that we cannot answer three planeswalkers in one turn. So you were wrong. And now we can go for this. And this, we don't need so many treasures anymore. And now it means that we can flip the Battle of Archivist very quickly, or Invasion, should I say. And then we will get triple spells every turn. Now we just need to make sure that we kill stuff. They think we, they are killing the Chandra. In reality, they are fueling a new one. And we already get the spell doubled, so that's really cool. Alright. Man, that was absolutely epic. Honestly, I didn't think it would go so cool. No, 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 I'm, I'm too excited, sorry. Alright, so every spell right now is doubled. I think I want to make to do this. Just one for four. Uh, maybe not. One is enough. They don't have counter spells, so we don't need to care about it. I want the empty board and a defender before I play Chandra. Especially if we can... F yeah. Man, we clean, we cleared three Planeswalkers in one turn and also an attacker while keeping our Planeswalker. Man, that was super epic. Mono black. Kinda happy to see them. Alright. This is probably for later. At least that would be the optimal play. Alright, let's go with double red. I don't think we hit the sleeper right now. Even if he pumps, it's okay. Honestly, he should pump. He didn't. No, I expected he would really play something. That's a little bit weird. Uh, I will play like this, because right now he's not doing much with sleeper, right? He can get it to 3-3 and draw a card, but I'm fine with it. Man, why is he not doing the thing? <laughs> That's so weird. Alright. I mean, if no he's not doing the thing, I will do the thing. Because I don't think... Like, they can have Edict. Like... The, the counterplay to getting this removed is not to never use it, bro. <laughs> like, you can, you can... I think he just try to avoid, like, play with fire. But this way he just never gets the value anyway. So it's, like, almost like I'm always having play with fire for this. Uh, let's go with Mirex, because that's the sixth land for Chandra. And given he is tapped out, I will decline. Even though I normally wouldn't uh, play like this. But we have so much value that if he spends the next turn answering this, I'm fine with it. Because I have either Farewell or Nahir Warcrafting and he kinda loses the whole uh, board of pressure. We can play like this for sure. So, uh, do we go with Farewell? Or try to sneak Chandra somehow? I, I think Farewell is just better. So yeah. Alright, so Zurgo was a great bait, and that's why we got shorted, thanks to this. Still decent trade for him, but our cards are really strong, man. I mean, really strong. 
We have four mana. All right, so in this case, I think we go for this play. It's a good short with removal, and we still get the, the token. We cannot activate it on the same turn, but he needs to act, uh, answer the seed shark. I would love to have one more mana for my disappear, but you know. <laughs> sure. Just more of those. But we have invasion, so we can get farewell. I don't think we die before uh, we get a uh, sweeper. We could also go Chandra and try to fish for like a sandfall. It's honestly not bad, but this one is just guaranteed, right? So why not? Why not? We also get a nice token. Uh, sideboard. White Sun's Twilight is really tempting as well. It gains us life. Alright. Alright, consider me convinced. My own sideboard convinced me. So given there's so much pressure, we really need to be defensive. We don't want to get hit by anything right now. Because this is the last turn and with White Sun's Twilight, he knows that we'll sweep. But he still needs to apply pressure, right? Otherwise he's not winning anyway. Interesting. But what will what will Liliana do? S make a sacrifice, so we activate the, the thing. And then we try to block the trespasser, we get hit for 6 total, we are at 3. Interesting. I cannot really counter it, so I guess it's fine. Enough with the mysteries. I've come for answers. Definitely Planeswalker is uh, very helpful because it survives the twilight. So they get something at least. I think that's an easy choice. And it's also easy choice for us. Hmm. I mean, we could trade with Stresspasser, but we don't care, really. They should death. That's a very weird play, man. I don't think we need this huge token. We would get a very nice token with this one, but I think we will win anyway. So we shouldn't need it. Uh, the question is, do I leave two mana for make this appear? Because I have a lot, right? I have five, nine mana. I think that's a sign. Let's just go with the five. This way our make this appear can be extremely useful and we already have creatures, right? So that would be a nice sideboard win. I guess I could attack, but then uh, whatever he plays can really mess me up. And if he wants to discard, he needs to get rid of his own card. And if he plays it, then I make disappear, right? So I think that was still okay. All right, anyway, uh, our our opening hand sucks. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, we need to draw a lot of lands. We basically need to go to four mana, cycle one of the sandfalls, and then if we survive that turn, we are okay. Uh, that is extremely good draw because it allows make disappear into empty board seed shark. Never mind. <laughs> This cute little dog. Uh, so I think I still counter stuff. Sea Shark is cool. I can see this being superior play. It's definitely more mana efficient. But I want to have big score and just get rid of the stuff, you know. And this way I can get very, very nice plays. Like playing big score basically wins the game at this point against this deck because I actually might skip the both Sunforce and get rid of Make Disappear. This is so many cards for one. Cool. I probably yeah, it's Ship and Reef. No blue, so we are not scared to play whatever. They can blink it maybe, I don't know. Oh boy, that's Chandra. <laughs> oh boy, that's uh, that's pretty good. I'm a bit scared about the mana. I think what he has... I think he has the, the exile for 3 mana. So let's play the, the shark first and bait the counter spell. Or the removal. And we will use negate probably. Because he has more, way more creatures. I They have this battle of fears. That's really good target for negate always. Alright, our opponent is doing something. Do they play emperor or what? It feels like Celestia enchantments but with no... Gameplay. 
All right, now they try to get rid of the full board. Cool. So first negate, because it hits very nicely and I don't need to sacrifice anything. And if he goes for like super all-in second ossification, we just make this appear. You know, it, we lose a little bit on Chandra's side. We could also do the other thing and just sunfold this. But I still think it's superior play this way. It also gives us a lot of tokens and he has no pressure on the board. It also will force him to play super white and then we sweep. Alright bro, that's one of the really cool plays for the deck. Now we... Okay, I wanted to get mana but let's be honest, it's way too tempting and I cannot resist this. See ya, that's, that's the game. So they, they won't be able to recover from this. They will probably remove Chandra or something, but those tokens will get them into turns and that's it. Alright, they're trying to scale, but that's way too late for scaling, man. Let's exile some stuff. We could go for mana, but i much rather hit something. Alright, I mean, not exactly what I wanted, but sure. We can use it, but I don't think we want. I'm not sure if that will have summoning sickness. Do you have? No. Alright, cool. And that's 10 damage already. We have the spite, so if they make something at dance, they really feel like they have something at instant speed. And they can make a token and make it huge uh, to kill Chandra. But generally this deck never has instants, but he really tries maybe he's just playing you know in full control mode oh that was it yeah exactly so they will make a lot of stuff uh, and we will kill a lot of stuff and win the game uh, by just attacking them with lethal calyx sure we have so much stuff man all right we will kill calyx and the visitor right now Oh, I should not click it now. Now he knows I, I want to remove stuff. Oh, okay. So, it will be Calyx. Uh, we get cool things. We could kill this as well, but... Well, honestly, all of those cards are pretty cool, but I don't think this game will last long enough for Double Sweeper. And getting rid of this land is pretty cool. Oh boy, we are... We are severely outvaluing them. All right, so we can go Zurgo into play with fire for four damage and Chandra minus three. We can kill them without actually attacking even. All right, we are going first. Hopefully we'll have a decent draw for once. Man, I just played a guy that took one minute on every single turn with Celestia enchantments. He also misplayed like basically every turn. And he was making like the most ridiculous plays ever for no reason. Nobody know what went there. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Like we won, but it was so frustrating to play that it would be even more frustrating to watch. Alright, cool. So what are we doing? Uh, probably a uh, shark, right? That should be a shark, I feel. A bit scary. Uh, we don't have a sweeper right now, the alchemist will pressure our life total very nicely. And we probably don't really even want to block with the with the shark, honestly. Oh boy, that's scary. One cool combination is big score, because you instantly get the treasures and you can activate the token you get from big score. Alright, interesting. We probably will have to kill the alchemist. So they try to hit a land, but... In reality, they have had one in the hand. And they should go for the cheek, I feel. Like, this gives a little... I mean, it is kind of viable because uh, it negates the Seed Shark, right? So I guess, I guess for the turn. You know what, I... For some reason, I kind of like this version a, a little bit. So how are we doing it? We definitely want to negate a lot of damage here. Or at least some damage. So let's get rid of this one. I mean, 
sure, I guess. I didn't expect this, but I will take it. At least we clear the board a little bit, right? All right. Uh, he obviously plays something. We know about the cheek at least. And that was uh, for two turns, basically. So one, his main phase, and, you know, until the end of the next turn. And that's the next turn. All right. Some Feldon Nightmare Fuel. They did not attack. All right. The, uh, consider me really surprised. I really think they should. I don't see the downside to attacking. So we are trying to stabilize a little bit. With big score we should have something. Oh, I hate it super much. I think this is the moment for big score. We have a lot to discard. And we can get make disappear, but we don't have enough mana, right? We need one more to counter it. Farewell is pretty decent. Alright, so we need to survive one turn. We don't want those treasures then. I hope he won't attack. Thank you, thank you. So we are not activating anything because then we will lose it. Alright, land. And we should attack first, because why not? I maybe could play it better, but I want to play it, you know, reasonably quick. Enchantments, and that's it, right? And let's go with the Gravers. So only artifacts are here, and we can activate a 6, yeah, it's probably better. Uh, still, uh, we have stroke for Raizu and make disappear for, for example, like Warfare. Wow, <laughs> they already scooped. <laughs> what a great matchup. I'm, man, Monoret is great addition to standard, no joke. Alright, we'll try to with the coast. I guess I have play with fire. All I need is curve out. Are we able to carve out with this deck with, you know, 26 lands? Because so far it seems that I lose most of the games by not being able to play 4 lands in a row. And that's insane. Please, let me play the game. <laughs> I really want to play a single match that makes sense. <laughs> Alright, uh, so... I will play with fire on your face and try to hit this freaking land in my top 10 cards. Yep, another game with mana screw. Alright, so we are going first. The spite is pretty amazing. Not only it's a removal, but it can also uh, help us curve out. Of course, we don't have blue mana, even though the Mirex helps uh, to get blue mana, but, you know, it will be late. Uh, hopefully it's some 2-drop that isn't Italia. Ah, uh, alright, that's fine. Uh, so we know everything. I'm not reading the card. Okay, I will read the card because I think it gives the way what the deck is about. Enchantment spell. Alright, so enchantment deck. I honestly want Zurgo. I think one make disappear can go simply because we need to hit other stuff and we don't have blue mana. Uh, we continue to draw all the blue cards. Oh man, what a day in the arena. Here's a Ganjo. We have Sunfall, so there's something, but the point is that we have problem with curving out. Alright, that's an extremely good draw. Alright, so we have some place at least. Which means that hopefully we get to Zurgo and Sunfall and try to fix the situation from there. Alright, a creature is here. It's just a 1-3, so we kind of can ignore it. I mostly did it for cycling. And the fact that he gets life gain is absolutely not meaningful. And that's actually really good for us as well. Alright, we know everything right now. I could counter it to negate one of the cards, but... Yeah, I think we go like this. It, you know, slows down his uh, thing a little bit and we can always... Oh my god. Alright, that's, that's pretty good. Let's go with Zurgo. And start to get this, you know, some good cards right now. Uh, spite, not really. We have 5 mana, we want to go into Chandra. Let's go for, for blue mana, right? Yeah, that's fine. And we get back the Zurgo. So the life doesn't matter, it's all about this card advantage during the game. 
Let's see if hollowed hunting, like definitely hollowed hunting is something that he plays. I like the sleeves, man. And he's a true dog fan, uh, which I can fully relate to. More restoration. All right, that's fine. So there, he can get this back on the next chapter, but not much more. Let's go for the blue mana. I could wait one more turn, or I can just sun for right now, which really helps and sets up sets up the the Chandra, right? This is my only removal, though. So a little bit scary. I still think that's a play. We are not attacking because then he can block and I mean the amount of creatures would be the same but we also don't gain anything, right? Alright, ramping. It's interesting. <laughs> Alright. I mean we endure the horrible start as usual, man. We cannot carve out with the lands but we, we made it through.